Welcome, boys and girls. We will have a great day of learning today. I am your host, Miss Hillary. This is Mr. Kenny. He will be your teacher today. Today, we will be learning about the Inca civilization that lived in South America. For our core content objectives, we will identify the area in which the Inca lived, explain that the Inca established or started a far-ranging empire in the Andes Mountains of Peru and Chile many, many years ago, and explain that the Inca had leaders called emperors and practiced their own religion. Thank you, Ms. Hillary. Welcome, boys and girls. I'm Mr. Kenny, and I look forward to working with you guys today. First, we will look at some words that will be useful as we read about the Inca civilization today. Our first word today is collecting. 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 Collecting, we will use this word to show action, so it is a verb. Collecting means that we are gathering things. We will pretend to pick up things in front of us. For example, Sherry wandered down the beach collecting all the shells that she could find. Can you pretend to be collecting things from the beach with me? Let's pick up and gather some seashells. When a girl is collecting hair bows that she likes, what is she doing? Yes, she is gathering them. Very good. What are you doing when we gather items that are similar, such as trading cards? We are, yes, we are collecting them. We will also look at this word today. This word is possessions. Possessions. We will use this word to represent a thing. It is a noun. Possessions are things that someone owns. For example, among the artist's possessions were paints, paintbrushes, and an easel. Can you pretend that you're letting someone know that what is in your hand belongs to you? Point to your hand and then point to yourself. If someone is your, if something is your possession, who does it belong to? Yes, it belongs to you. This marker, this marker is my possession. It belongs to me. If a book belongs to you, it is your, yes, it is your possession. Our last word to look at today is villagers. Villagers. We will use this word to represent people. It is a noun. Villagers are people living in a small town or village. They're the people in our village. For example, the villagers walk down the road through their village together. Remember, a village is a small town. Can you pretend that you're talking to a group of people that live in the same place? Point your hands to your body and then stretch them out from you. If people are villagers, do they live in a small town or place? Yes, the people living together are villagers. You and all the people that live in your small town are what for that town? Yes. You are all villagers of your town. So now, let's talk about where are we. I have a globe with us today so that we can find where in the world that the Inca live. We'll begin by looking at the Americas. This is North America. This is where our country, the United States of America, is located along with our neighbors of Mexico and Canada. If you remember from earlier lessons, point to where the Maya lived. That's right, I saw several of you pointing uh, to our globe in North and Central America. You were exactly right. 
The Maya lived in Mexico and Central America. They lived in the rainforest of the area that we now call the Yucatan Peninsula. Point to the area where the Aztec lived. If you're having trouble remembering, I can help. Was the area north or south of the Maya population? Right. It was above the Maya population on the globe. That direction is the north. The Aztec lived in central Mexico, north of the Maya. Today, we'll be learning about a third civilization, the Inca civilization. It developed in South America. The Inca ruled over the lands that stretched along the Andes Mountains and the Pacific Ocean. That is the present-day countries of Bolivia, Ecuador, Argentina, Chile, and Peru. Today's story will take place in the area that is now called Peru. This area here uh, along the ocean and in the mountains. So, what do we see in this picture? That's right, you see a really neat looking animal. How many of you thought that was a camel? Raise your hand if that is what you thought. Well, you were close, but this animal is not a camel. This animal is called a llama. Llamas do not have humps like camel. These animals, llamas, were very important to the Inca people. Can you say llama? Llama. Good job. I heard several people saying llama. The Inca lands were a large empire. They were ruled by just one leader. Today, as I read you the story, you will hear some true facts about the Inca as part of this made-up story. Listen as I read the story aloud. I want you to pay close attention and see if you can tell how the Inca leader is the same as the Maya and Aztec leaders that you have learned about earlier. Also, see if you can think of how the Inca leader is different from them as well. The title of our story is The Inca. Who were the Inca? The Inca were one of many groups of people who lived in North, Central, and South America long ago. They lived in the western part of South America, which you can see on the map. The Inca lived in parts of what we now call Bolivia, Ecuador, Argentina, Peru, and Chile. They controlled about 2,500 miles of land in South America. That's about the same distance as if you measured from one side of the United States to the other. More incredibly, the Inca created almost 20,000 miles of roads. That is a lot of roads. 20,000 miles of roads is more roads than the amount of land they controlled. They walked or ran in order to share ideas and information with other Inca in faraway parts of their empire. Many of these roads are still used today. The Inca controlled so much land because they conquered other nations of people. Each time they did, the size of their empire would grow. Remember, to conquer is to take over other people against their will and control their land. Just as the Aztec conquered other people and had an empire, the Inca did as well, but in a different way. When the Inca conquered other nations, the emperor of the Inca would often have the conquered villagers move to a new area. Remember, a village is a small town. 
What do we call the people that live in a small town or village? Awesome. We do call those people villagers. The rest of this read aloud is a story about a village that was forced to move. I do not understand, cried the girl. Her name was Little Flower, and she was five years old. Why do we have to move? This is where we live. The girl's name is Little Flower. The Inca, like the Maya and Aztec, named themselves for plants, animals, or types of weather that had special meaning to them. Her older sister, Blue Sky, tried to explain. As she had been trying for three days now, the emperor of the Inca was ordered, has ordered our people, the people of the village of Stone Walls, to move. He says we must go and live in the big, tall mountains closer to his city of Cusco. He says if we are living among his own people, we will not try to be so different from them. He says we will get to be friends with the Inca people. And before you ask me again, little flower, I will tell you one last time. The emperor of the Inca now rules the village of Stone Walls. We have to do as he says, or he will be very angry. Blue Sky thought about how much to tell Little Flower. She did not want to upset her sister, but even though she was usually a very, very patient older sister, she was so tired of talking about this over and over again. After all, she thought, I am not so old myself. I do not like to think about these things either. But then she looked once more at her little sister, whom she really did love, and said as gently as she could, If the Inca emperor gets angry with all the people of the village of Stonewalls, it will not be like when Papa or Mama gets mad at you or me. It will be much worse. So I think we had better do what he orders, don't you? Little Flower thought about this. Yes, she answered. I guess I will, uh, I guess we had better do it. But as Blue Sky smiled and went back to collecting or gathering her things, the smaller girl whispered to herself, but I still don't like it. How do you think Little Flower and Blue Sky feel about leaving their village? Three days later, all the people who had lived in the village of Stone Walls were ready to move. They were sad to leave their home, and even the oldest and wisest of them felt the way that Little Flower felt, for they were about to go someone no one from the village of Stone Walls had ever even visited. The people from the village of Stone Walls were used to living in the dry, flat desert lands down near the ocean coast of what is today called Peru. They had never been a mountain people, nor had they lived anywhere as cold as where they were moving. Yet the colder, high mountains is where they had to go. What animal is seen with this arrow? Yes, it's a llama. Correct, you remember from our earlier discussion, this is a llama. They will use the llama to carry their, their possessions, very good. The people of the village of Stonewalls used llamas to carry loads for them. Llamas were very gentle, but strong enough to carry a lot on their backs. Blue Sky and Little Flower loaded all the possessions they were able to take with them onto their llama. What are possessions? Right, possessions are things that people owned. Early the next morning, Blue Sky, Little Flower, and the rest of the people from the village of Stone Walls left their homes to make new ones in the mountains around Cusco. Thank you for listening so intently. 
I know you are ready to answer questions about our read aloud. The read aloud says that the Inca created 20,000 miles of roads. Why did they need so many? Yes, they had a large empire, didn't they? So they needed roads to get from one place to the other. What do you think happened as the empire grew? How did they get to these newly conquered lands? That's some great thinking. Yes, they built more and more roads to connect to their newly conquered lands. Great job. The read aloud also tells us that the Inca walked or ran from one place to another, often very long distances. Why wouldn't they get in their cars and drive from place to place or call someone on the phone to give them a message like we do? Oh, I see some thinking. I see those wheels turning. Good job thinking of that. Were cars and phones invented at the time of the Inca? No, they weren't even invented yet. The Inca were an early American civilization. Our next question, why were all the people in the village of Stone Walls moving at once? Are you thinking about why they are moving? Did they move because they wanted to move? Why were all the people in the village of Stone Walls moving at once? <laughs> exactly. They were forced to move by the emperor of the Inca, who had conquered their village. They had no choice. How is this reason different from reasons we move today? If you were forced or had to move, would it be because someone took control of your town? No, I don't think so. If I had to move today, it might be because our parents were changing apartments or moving to start a new job, or maybe they even bought a new house. That would be exciting. What can you tell about the leaders of the Inca? Yes, they definitely wanted to expand their empire. What are some of the actions of the Inca leaders to accomplish that goal? Think of those in your brain. Now, what did their actions tell you about the leaders of the Inca? Did you say they were greedy? Yes, I heard someone else say they were bossy, are mean because they would make people move away from their homes to other areas even if they didn't want to. How do you think the people felt about the leaders? Yes, they were probably a little fearful of the leaders. How was the village of Stone Walls different from the city of Cusco where Blue Sky and Little Flower and the others are moving? We need to organize our thinking about what our story told us about the village of Stone Walls and the city of Cusco. Let's reread part of our story that described the place where the girls lived and where they would be moving. Listen for places and adjectives or describing words about the places. On this page we read, the people from the village of Stone Walls were used to living in the dry, flat desert lands down near the ocean coast of what is today called Peru. They had never been a mountain people, nor had they lived anywhere as cold as where they were moving. Yet the colder, high mountains is where they had to go. Here we read, he says we, we must go and live in the big, tall mountains closer to his city of Cusco. Let's look at our Venn diagram. In this circle, I will write words that describe our village of stone walls. In this circle, I will write words that describe the city of Cusco. We're not looking for how they are similar, 
so I will not use this area in the in the area in the middle to compare. What words or phrases did you hear to describe the village? Yes, I did hear dry. What else did we hear? It is desert lands. What else? Near the ocean. And, oh, it was flat, wasn't it? That's, flat is definitely different than Cusco. So what phrases did we hear to decide, describe the city of Cusco? Yes, it is definitely in the mountains. Oh, that's another good one. Definitely cold. The girls were not used to the cold, were they? Oh, definitely, definitely up in the mountains. And it was definitely a city. I heard that, someone say that. So now I can tell how was the village of stone walls different from the city of Cusco where Blue Sky, Little Flower, and the others were moving. I want you to think in your brain. Let's start a sentence with the village of stone walls. Looking at our anchor chart, let's think the village of stone walls was And it was near? Yes. The village of Stone Walls was located in flat, dry desert lands near the ocean coast. Now let's think of a sentence for Cusco. We can start our sentence with Cusco was. Cusco was. Very good. Cusco was a larger city located high up in the tall mountains where it was much colder. Blue Sky does not want her little sister, Little Flower, to be scared. How would you feel if you were moving to a new place that you had never seen before uh, and that was very different from the place where you lived? Have you ever moved to a new place? What are some words? Yes, I heard words like nervous, scared, excited, sad, and happy. Each of you would feel a different way because each of you are different. Just make sure that you use a feeling word. In the read aloud you heard, Blue Sky and Little Flower loaded all the possessions they were able to take with them on their llama. So what are possessions? Very good. Possessions are things that you own. So what are your favorite possessions? I know my favorite possessions might be, that's right, very good. I liked hearing about some of your favorite possessions. So I, Today, we learned about the area where the Inca lived, how they farmed, and how they built an empire many years ago. I am so glad that you joined me for this lesson. I hope to see you very soon. What a great lesson, Mr. Kenny. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing with us. You're welcome, Ms. Hillary. Thank you for joining us today. Please join us again for more reading fun. All rights and credits for today's lesson belong to Core Knowledge Language Arts. We would like to thank them for publicly sharing these valuable resources. The views and opinions expressed in this lesson are those of the Core Knowledge authors and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the Mississippi Department of Education. See you next time!